In February of 2023, YouTuber Dubis Goobis uploaded a video to his channel talking about a game called Pizza Tower. In this video, he describes the game's premise of a humble pizzeria owner who goes on a psychotic rampage trying to stop a giant laser set to destroy his restaurant. Yeah, he's great. Get me out of here! I've been trapped for five days! Needless to say, I had to know more. I had come to learn that this game had gotten quite a bit of attention since its release, with everyone praising its over-the-top style and gameplay. I must admit though that, outside of the visuals, Pizza Tower didn't seem like something that was going to resonate with me. Something about how the gameplay looked, running across each level so fast that you could barely see anything coming at you. The way people were saying how it controlled differently from a lot of other platformers, it just seemed like something I wasn't going to get into. Only recently did I finally decide to give it a try, and you know what? I actually had a pretty good time with it. Whether or not it lives up to the hype is something I don't think I can answer here, but I definitely don't think you'll be biting off more than you can chew by giving it a try. You know, if that was something you were worried about like I was. There's no better way to get into it than to just start, so here's my brief review of Pizza Tower which I decided to make at a point when all the hype has died down, for some reason. Before I get into the actual gameplay, I just have to talk about these visuals. I mean, look at this. When is the last time you've seen a game that looks like this? If I didn't know any better, I'd think Dubis was promoting his own game. Everyone in this game is drawn so crudely, but they're all just so energetic. Not to mention animated way better than they should be. Honestly, I'd say the whole appeal with these designs is that you just wouldn't expect to see so much effort to be put into animating what might as well be doodles from a middle schooler's textbook. The main character, Pepino, is the prime example of what makes these designs so great. Every expression and movement out of him is exaggerated to its fullest cartoony extent, as you see him run at full speed or scream in utter terror. The levels too are just as great. They're all so colorful and detailed while still retaining that crude style each of the characters have, not to mention having so much variety across the game. I guess if I had to nitpick, I'd say the background and foreground could be a bit more distinct at times. It's something about those hard lines. There were a few moments I got stuck not knowing a certain obstacle was just a prop in the background. It really is a nitpick though, this doesn't happen a lot. Okay, I'm uh, editing the video right now, and looking back at this footage, it's not really the background props I'm thinking of, it's these foreground objects that might as well be in the background. Uh, this crate you're looking at here, it looks like there's a big wall in the way, but no, it's just slightly behind you. Granted, the ladder should be a dead giveaway, but it's still the same color as the crate. It's confusing. It took me a few seconds to actually notice it was there. I mean, either way, though, it's still not a big deal. Like I said, this doesn't happen a lot. I'm, I'm just trying to correct myself. I'm honestly struggling to think of any other games that look like this one. Maybe Henry Stickman. Maybe. Still though, Pizza Tower is clearly its own entity when it comes to the way it looks. The visuals here are truly one of a kind, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of games in the future tried copying it. Because that is gonna happen. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> The main objective of Pizza Tower is making your way to the top of the Pizza Tower, which I know doesn't lean, but it's gonna do more than that soon, trust me. The tower is made up of five floors, and on each floor is a series of stages where you need to collect these sentient pizza topping things. You get a cash reward for every topping you find, and you use that money to pay this guy off, Mr. Stick, to open the door to that floor's boss. Beat the boss, and you unlock the next floor, and then rinse and repeat. It's pretty standard saying it out loud, but there is one thing about Pizza Tower that makes it stand out from so many other platformers. Not necessarily all, but still a lot, and that's the speed of it. 90% of the time, you're going to be jumping, climbing, and smashing things while running across the level at full speed. And like I said earlier, I just didn't see myself getting good at it. From what I heard about this game, I went into it expecting to run into everything coming at me before I even knew it was there. Now, I'm not saying that I don't enjoy a good challenge, and I'm certainly not saying I'm unfamiliar with remembering hazards before replaying a level. For something like this though, I just didn't think I'd be able to remember those hazards because I wouldn't even notice them hurt me to begin with. Having finally played the game though, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that I was right. 
But here's the thing. If you're going into this game without really caring to 100% it, then you really don't need to master these speedy controls. I mean, you definitely want to get a decent feel for them, but it's really not a big deal if you screw up a lot. Pizza Tower is a very forgiving game most of the time. You don't even lose health in the main levels. The biggest punishment for failure will usually just involve you going back to where you were a few seconds ago. The only thing you really need to worry about is finding the toppings in each level. I think this game is smart enough to realize that traditional penalties are just not going to fly well with most people. For how this game controls, it would just mean a lot of them would be stuck on the first floor for way too long. The only times where there are any actual stakes are at the very end of each level, where you have to make it back to the beginning before the timer runs out. Take too long, and you have to start the level over. It's a harsh punishment for sure, but this task just ends up being easier because of the fast controls. Not to mention, characters in the background point the way to go, so yeah, you don't have much of an excuse if you get lost. I'd say there were maybe two instances in the entire game where I actually ran out of time here. Now, don't take any of this to mean that there's no challenge in this game at all. At the end of each level, you're given a rank based on how flawless your run was. If you want to get the best possible rank for every level, you need to go through each of them taking little to no damage, killing almost every enemy, finding every secret, and doing it all in one long combo. All things I watched other people do because I just really don't want to do it myself. It's there where mastering these controls actually matters. I will say though that even if you don't master them, it's still very much fun to try. There is just something so exhilarating about watching this portly Italian chef mow down everything in his path. Peppino is a force to be reckoned with, purging the weak and dancing on their graves. Not to mention that inhuman grip strength that allows him to claw into solid brick, or a super jump that launches him up with like a nuclear warhead, or those funky fresh moves. I will say the roll mechanic doesn't really feel good when you're using a controller. It's really awkward trying to find that sweet spot between pointing the joystick down and to the side. I checked the bindings menu too. There's literally room for an extra button. I think that would have made for a much better roll mechanic. Now, these are just the standard controls we're talking about. So many of these levels have some kind of unique gimmick that changes up the way you control Pepino. Green bubbles that reverse gravity, little cheesemen that you use as golf balls, guns. There's even times when you switch to this guy who rides a giant rat that slams down to the floor. These things also take some getting used to, but they're just so insane that it's fun to try them regardless. Now, I've mostly sung this game's praises so far, but I've been holding out on something very important. As great as these visuals are, or as fun as these controls are, they aren't what truly made this game for me. No, what truly did it for me was one thing, or rather, five things. <laughs> The bosses in this game are nothing short of amazing. I know I basically said the game is only challenging if you're going for a high rank in each level, but that's not entirely true. Unlike the main levels, you actually have health to lose when fighting these guys. And let me tell you, you're going to lose it. They do not hold back one bit. There is just so much stuff flying around the screen at every second, it almost felt like I was playing Cuphead with how much there was to avoid. And this is only made harder by how fast Pepino moves. The thing too though, if you ask me at least, is that these bosses aren't needlessly ruthless. For every hit you land, there's a decent chance that a piece of health will drop for you. So unlike that Cuphead comparison, losing health isn't really a problem, just as long as you can recover it at the same rate you lose it. Even this though can be a challenge. You still need to get a good sense of these bosses' movements if you actually want to hit them because they move just as fast as you, if not faster. Recovering your health is still something you need to get good at. It just means each boss will take you less tries than if you couldn't recover your health at all. Everything else in this game is fine, but if you ask me, these bosses are where Pizza Tower truly shines. So, there's Pizza Tower for you. A fun, unique, and kind of insane platform. From what I understand too is that the developer of this game was comprised of mainly two guys, with this being their first title. With that in mind, I think it's amazing they were able to pull this off. Like they seriously hit it out of the park. I definitely look forward to seeing what else these guys come up with in the future, but for now, give Pizza Tower a try if you haven't already. There is some fun to be had.
Hey, thanks for watching. This was a smaller video I worked on alongside a much bigger project, so do check that out if you enjoyed this. In the meantime though, please be on the lookout for any future uploads. Also, consider subscribing, sharing the video, and just overall spreading the word. This is a new channel that I want to see if I can't turn into something big, and the more support I get, the more likely that is to happen, and the more I can spend time making these videos and getting better at it. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you all soon.